So in this video, we're going to talk about understanding proteinuria. And so before we talk about proteinuria, I want to talk about the glomerular filtration barrier. And so this is a cartoon we've been using showing a cluster of capillary loops, including endothelial cells, the basement membrane, and podocytes, or epithelial cells, located at the glomerulus. So let's take a closer look at one of these capillaries. Next, you can see one of these capillary loops in isolation. And so I've exposed different layers so you can see them more clearly. The first layer is the endothelial layer, and this endothelial layer is fenestrated, which means it has large windows or pores in them. Next comes the glomerular basement membrane, which is this pink layer that surrounds the endothelial layer. Sitting on top of the basement membrane are podocytes, and so podocytes are specialized epithelial cells, and so they have these foot processes that sort of interlock with other neighboring podocytes, and in between these interlocking foot processes are other tinier foot processes. So now you can see one of these capillary loops in isolation, and I've drawn it to expose the three different layers of the filtration barrier. And so first is the capillary endothelial layer. And so you can see uh, this layer has holes in it, and so it's a fenestrated endothelial layer, which means it has windows or large pores in them. Next comes the glomerular basement membrane, which is represented by this pink layer surrounding the capillary endothelium. Sitting on top of the basement membrane are podocytes, and so the podocytes are specialized epithelial cells. And so neighboring podocytes have these long projections that, uh, when in close proximity, they actually have little tiny foot processes that are actually uh, interlocking, much like your hands interlocking the fingers on each hand. And so this forms the final and third uh, layer of the glomerular filtration barrier. So uh, what if we could take a closer look at that? What would that look like? So next you can see all the layers stacked on top of each other. And so the first layer, you can see this fenestrated endothelium. And then in pink, you can see the glomerular basement membrane. And then next, uh, what we're seeing are these podocyte foot processes sort of in cross section. And then you can see that uh, different foot processes, as, as they sort of interlink, they're actually connected by a series of proteins. And uh, this collection of proteins we call the slit diaphragm. And so these three layers all together form the filtration barrier present in the glomerulus. So here is this uh, fenestrated endothelial layer. And so it's important because um, these pores, it's they're large enough to allow plasma through. So serum plus all the plasma proteins could make it through the pores, but it restricts cells. So white blood cells and red blood cells are too large to pass through. So this forms the first important barrier here. So the next layer worth mentioning is the glomerular basement membrane. So I'm just going to say GBM for short here. And so basically the GBM is a very thin layer, and it's a, a intricate meshwork of extracellular matrix proteins. And so some of the notable ones include uh, laminin and uh, type 4 collagen. So uh, if you look, you know, if you looked closely enough, this meshwork actually does have tiny pores in it as well. And so a couple things worth noting is that the GBM actually has a mostly negative charge, and so it would repel other negatively charged plasma proteins. And it also has a size barrier in that it will restrict large plasma proteins, and it seems to restrict proteins uh, that are about 60 to 70 kilodaltons in size. So anything about that size or above uh, cannot make it through, or if they do make it through, it's in very, very small quantities. So plasma proteins that are uh, smaller than this will make it through. So when we talk about plasma proteins, uh, we're talking about a number of things. So what would make it through and what wouldn't? So albumin is pretty big. So 69 kilodaltons um, is generally restricted from filtration, mainly due to uh, the pores in the glomerular basement membrane. And so a little bit of albumin does get filtered, but very small amounts, and it is eventually reabsorbed by the proximal tubules. Now, what about low molecular weight proteins? And so these are things that are generally, you know, less than 25 kilodaltons in molecular weight. And so some examples include uh, beta-2 microglobulin, immune globulin light chains like kappa and lambda chains, retinol binding protein, and other uh, polypeptides, based on their size, these would be able to be uh, filtered past the GBM. So it's worth noting that um, really the combination of the GBM and the podocytes, uh, specifically the slit diaphragms in between each of those foot processes, is what contributes to 
the exclusion of plasma proteins from the filtrate. And so uh, these two things will work together. You know, the GBM has to come from somewhere, and uh, both the podocytes and endothelial cells will uh, contribute to formation of the GBM. So um, in summary, really the GBM and podocytes are working together to exclude large proteins like albumin. They'll allow low molecular weight proteins through but most importantly, all the small stuff, so small molecules and solutes, um, remember like sodium, potassium, glucose, uh, all that stuff will be filtered through the um, glomerular filtration barrier. And this is what is eventually um, the filtrate and what will eventually become the urine. So here we are looking at all the things that get filtered. So solutes and small molecules, they'll pass through the tubules. Um, most of it undergoes reabsorption. Some of it undergoes selective secretion. And uh, many small molecules and solutes end up in the urine in the final composition. Now remember that low molecular weight proteins get filtered, and maybe a tiny amount of albumin does end up getting filtered anyway. What happens to these things? Well, they pass through the tubules, and in the proximal tubule, okay, in the proximal tubule, filtered protein will get reabsorbed, it will get reclaimed. So nearly all of the low molecular weight proteins will get reabsorbed and the albumin will get reabsorbed as well. And so I like to think of this um, in terms of how the proximal tubule handles other things like glucose um, and even bicarbonate. So just because those things are small molecules, they will get filtered, but we don't necessarily want to uh, get rid of something like glucose. And so uh, these low molecular weight proteins, you know, our body may have spent you know, a lot of time and energy creating these things. And just because they're small, we don't want to lose them. And so right after they're filtered in the proximal tubule, uh, we have a mechanism. Our body has this uh, backup mechanism to reclaim and reabsorb these things that we don't want to lose in the urine. So next, you may not know this, but uh, the kidney tubules actually create protein that ends up in the urine. And so in the thick ascending limb, that's what TAL means here, um, it will produce a protein called TAM horsefall protein, or uh, the other name is uromodulin. And so this protein is uh, released into the luminal space. And so as far as what it does, well, we're not entirely sure, but it could inhibit calcium crystallization in the urinary fluid. It could have some defense activity against urinary tract infections. Um, we do know that at uh, high concentrations at a low pH, it actually forms kind of like a gel matrix. And uh, once you spin enough urines and look under urine microscopy, when you see a cellular cast or a hyaline kind of cast, what you're actually seeing is sort of the uh, gel matrix of TAM horsefall protein. Um, and it sort of forms this clear cast-like material. So keep on the lookout for it. So uh, when we talk about urine protein, some of it or a lot of it is uh, actually TAM horsefall protein. So this is not a plasma protein that got filtered. This is something that was actually produced by tubules. Based on all that, what would be considered normal in terms of urinary protein excretion? So there's probably you know, a little bit of debate worldwide about what exactly should be the cutoffs for normal or abnormal, but I think a lot of nephrologists would agree with these numbers at least. So less than 150 milligrams of total protein per day, that would be considered normal. Less than 30 milligrams of albumin in the urine per day, that would be considered normal as well.